Hi there. Welcome to Marxism Today. My name is Red Wagner, and today's episode is the second episode of the second season, Marxism and Technology. I want to start today's episode by saying that sometimes before recording an episode, I will bounce the idea off of friends or I'll talk about the topic for the episode beforehand with some people I know. I did this today before I started drafting the outline for this episode, and I mentioned to a friend that, uh, in this case a non-Marxist friend, that I'd be doing an episode on Marxism and technology. And he asked me a very interesting question. He asked, oh, is Marx against technology? Which was really interesting to me because when I do an episode uh, on here, I'm I'm very rarely um, talking about what Marx is for or what Marx is against. And, and that's really not my conception of what Marxism is. Obviously, that's a part of it. When we talk about the class struggle, it's clear to see which side Marx is on. But Marxist analysis is much more about which side are you on. It's just not, it's not just this is good, this is good, this is good, these, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. It's also an, a way of understanding the world. And, and really, that's, that's the much larger contribution, I think, that Marxism plays, is that it's, it's um, a variety of different theoretical categories that we can apply to a given situation to shed light on it, to understand it in a new way. And so when, when I'm going through this episode, uh, you'll see pieces of what Marx is for, what Marx is against, or really... Um, what we could say Marxists are for or Marxists are against. But the focus is really on what does the theory show us? What, how do we understand technology from a Marxist standpoint? I guess the point that I want to get across with this story is that everyone has different conceptions of what Marxism is. And I find it very interesting to hear what other people think Marxism means. And uh, clearly to my friend who's, I mean, he, he knows I'm a Marxist and I think agrees with me on certain topics, but he doesn't call himself a Marxist nor study Marx in any way. Um, but he, his concept, what, what, what he sees as Marxism is sort of this, you know, what side are you on? And I, I mean, I guess that's an important piece of it, but it's not the... Pu- piece I focus on. So uh, I thought that was interesting. So if, if that's not the right question, if Marx, um, if how did Marx feel about technology or how was Marx against technology? That's the wrong question. Um, the right question would be, what can Marxism tell us about technology? So um, let's dive into that. And I want to start by talking um, first about how technology plays a role in capitalism because a lot of what Marx put together was an understanding of capitalism and other social systems as well, but with a strong focus on capitalism. So first, we always have to remember that different institutions, different things are going to play differently in capitalism versus other modes of production. The thing that really sticks out with capitalism is that we have a lot more technological innovation in capitalism. And this this shouldn't be particularly surprising. We know that um, the thousand years of medieval rule in Europe didn't lead to very much technological innovation. But um, our short period, relatively short period of time of 300 years of capitalism or so has led to um, massive changes in technology. And we see it every day with brand new things coming out. And why is this? Why is it that under capitalism we have much more technology or greater dynamism or change in the technological realm? And this is because under capitalism, the ruling class competes with each other in ways that it didn't do under feudalism, slavery, tribal society, things like that. To elaborate on this point, if we think of a feudal lord, that lord has the land given to him by the king. He own, he rules over the serfs on that land. He's never going to lose that land or get bought out by another lord, or at least that's not 
the normal way of doing things under feudal rule. He'll pretty much always be a lord. He'll pretty much always have those same serfs. So he doesn't need to worry about adopting the most recent technology in order to stay competitive with the other lords. And as you can see, I was jumping into kind of the drive for technological innovation in capitalism. Why does capitalism have technological innovation? Well, it's because of this competitive aspect. It's and And when we talk competition here amongst capitalists we're really talking about the drive for profit there's trying to find a way to get more profit than their competitors the reason they do this is because they know everyone is trying to do it each capitalist is trying to make more than his competitors and the capitalist who does this will be able to survive and continue to be a capitalist the next day and the capitalist who doesn't do it will go out of business he'll get bought out he'll go bankrupt essentially he'll be driven out of the ruling class and then be part of the uh, working class if he cannot maintain competitiveness so what are the effects that that's the motive behind it it's always profit and so then kind of how does technology get used under capitalism this means that the technologies that capitalists are focusing on the ones that are thought about developed and used are the ones that promote capitalist profit a capitalist isn't going to be particularly um mindful of technology that might make work more fun to do or more interesting to do because the capitalist doesn't particularly care if his workers are having fun or if they're interested maybe if that means that he can get more value out of them in some way than that yes but that that's because it gives him more profit if it makes the workers happier but doesn't increase profits then there's no reason to do it that's the first piece of how technology is used under capitalism Another piece is when when technology is used, it's often labor saving or it allows for a greater production of the same of um, the same commodity. So if you think making a car by hand would be very hard and you could hire a lot of workers to um, make cars by hand. But if you had certain pieces of technology, certain machines, you wouldn't have to have as skilled workers and they could make cars a lot faster. This has a variety of different effects. One p- one effect that technology often has is to make the work simpler. This allows the capitalist to replace a highly skilled worker who may be able to demand um, high wages because the skills aren't, aren't particularly abundant in society. That worker can be replaced by an unskilled worker or a worker with fewer skills or less skills because the machine might make the job simpler to do. We also see that a machine might allow one worker to do the work that used to require many workers. So in this way, technology under capitalism can produce unemployment. All the workers that used to be needed are now collecting unemployment or out on the streets or whatever, depending on the degree of social welfare in the given location. Along with producing unemployment, Technology can also have this negative effect of stagnating wages. So if you raise unemployment, if all of a sudden you take all these workers that used to work and you throw them into the unemployment lines, that means there's a lot more workers looking for work. So wages don't have to go up. In fact, they can even be decreased. I mean, if if you want to think about it in simple supply and demand terms, the demand for workers has gone down and the supply of unemployed workers has gone up so the price for workers which is what we call the wage or the salary would fall in this case or at the very least would not rise up with the adoption of technology we also get stagnating wages unemployment stagnating wages simpler work and sometimes simpler work could make the job more enjoyable if you know sometimes you might have technology that um makes a very complex task a very easy task so the worker might enjoy that aspect of it but be unaware of the fact that at the same time that aspect is reducing the particular importance of that worker that might erase some of the distinction that that worker has in skills above just any unskilled worker leaving that particular worker at a disadvantage So if technology has all these negative effects under capitalism, 
unemployment, stagnating wages, simpler work, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Perhaps it makes the work particularly boring or repetitive. That could be a bad thing. If it has these effects, isn't technology a bad thing under capitalism? Well, it's a mixed bag. It's both good and bad. Uh, One of the effects of technology often is to lower the price of commodities. When you can produce them with fewer workers, you know, you'll take a cut of that as profits. You'll take another piece of it and lower your prices so that you can stay more competitive. Um, there's a variety of different things. So lowering prices is a good effect. Also, the fact that it moves humanity further along. It, you know, With lowering prices, it allows sometimes a higher standard of living as long as prices fall greater than wages um, fall. So, you know, it's a mixed bag. It could be one or the other. Which falls more? I don't know. In any given situation, and that's, that's something that would need to be analyzed. But at the same time, technology also m- moves mankind forward. It, it builds on each other. And even though it, there are these bad pieces mixed in, the fact that capitalism moves mankind along the technological path does help So now I'd like to kind of switch gears a little bit and say, well, we've talked about capitalism and how it uses technology. If if as Marxists we want to move beyond capitalism, then we need to understand what how technology could be used otherwise. How could it be better in a non-capitalist world? Here's kind of a way to think about technology. Say we have a piece of labor saving technology. Under capitalism, this, again, creates unemployment, stagnating wages, things like that. In a post-capitalist society, if we have a piece of labor-saving technology, there are essentially two very simple choices that can result from this. One is that we can have more stuff because with the same amount of labor, we can make more of the product. So everyone can have more if for some reason there, there would be a need that everyone would want more. Then that's a choice. Or there could just be less labor time so people wouldn't have to work as long um, because they could spend half as much time working and produce the same amount of stuff so we'd get more leisure time. That to me and I think to Marxists uh, besides myself is a rational choice. That's the choice that we should get with technology. Capitalism on the other hand doesn't allow us to make this choice right because if the capitalist is going to remain competitive, he needs to take that extra money and use that as profits and reinvest it. He needs to lower the prices to stay competitive. Uh, he needs to do a variety of things that don't allow either of these choices to be brought up at all. So wor- workers don't work less and, and they don't get more under capitalism. Another important piece to remember is that under a, not, a post-capitalist world, the type of technology that we could consider would open up. So labor-saving technology, that's great. Capitalists care about that as well, and we should care about it in a post-capitalist world. But what about technology that doesn't really make the labor any more efficient and maybe it stays the same in efficiency, but makes the work more enjoyable or uh, empowers the worker in some way, makes him feel less alienated from his work or... Uh, more fulfilled by it. These are pieces of technology that should be con- seriously considered under a post-capitalist society. There's no reason for a capitalist to go out on a limb, take a risk to adopt one of these pieces of technology when he doesn't get anything from it. But if instead of a capitalist making the decisions in pursuit of profit, we have workers making the decision for a better world, for you know, nicer conditions for themselves or fewer working hours for themselves or, you know, a higher standard of living for themselves, then all of a sudden choosing technology that wakes, makes work uh, more interesting or more enjoyable becomes an option. It, it's opened up. And right now, I don't think there is a lot of technology out there. I might be confusing you by talking about this category of technology that w- makes work more interesting. What the, what the heck could it be? What, what may, would make work more interesting? Well, no one works on that now. Nobody thinks about that now. If no one thinks about it, then of course there's not going to be very many examples of that. When I was talking with another friend, he, he mentioned to me that he thinks that work is just always going to be boring and dull and horrible. And he happens to enjoy video games. So I 
brought up this analogy of well before electricity or before really just before video games existed nobody ever thought of you know what interesting video game can i make what you know new fun way can i design a video based interactive game nobody thought about it but because under capitalism you can sell those as commodities and when technology allowed that to happen then all of a sudden there's this explosion of different ideas of you know how, how i can make something that might be entertaining to someone you know if there is the motive to do it and the labor behind it to support that then people will investigate those realms and right now under capitalism there's not a lot of investigation under the realm of using technology to make work more interesting because there's no reason to in a post-capitalist world that'd certainly be an option and i i think it would be an option that would just greatly improve life if you know work was made to be something that people enjoyed rather than something to be kind of gotten out of the way if you liked some of the ideas in this uh podcast i want to conclude by offering a piece of further reading I would suggest to you um, a very interesting book called Cutting Edge. The subtitle is Technology, Information Capitalism, and Social Revolution. This book is essentially a collection of essays written by different Marxists on the topic of technology and topics surrounding technology. They all approach it from a Marxist viewpoint, but they come to very different conclusions. If you saw, I think it was one of my earlier videos, perhaps the introduction video or podcast if you happen to be a podcast listener instead of a video watcher. I mentioned at one point in that introduction episode that Marxists are not a hive mind. There's a lot of different, you know, Marxists debate and argue with each other, but within a certain realm of categorical ideas. This book is a great example of that. You can see Marxist debating over what does you know, the information commodity mean, our new information world. What is it and how does it function as capitalism? What are the possibilities in it for moving beyond capitalism? Um, Very interesting book. It'll give you a lot to think about. If you liked the topics in this podcast, you'll probably like that book. This has been episode two, season two, Marxism and Technology. I'm Red Wagner. Thanks for listening. This episode is part of the Marxism Today podcast series. Marxism Today is recorded, mixed, edited, produced, and maintained by Red Wagner. It is distributed freely and licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 license. To find out more about the Marxism Today podcast, visit our website at marxismtodaypodcast.wordpress.com, where you can find archives of all of our episodes available for download. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.